Okay, sweet. Wow, it has been quite some time since I've uh, done one of these entries. Um, a little over a month um, since my last my last entry, and um, I'm not going to continue with my story in, in the, this at this time. Um, I'm still working on it, recording some more. Uh, some more audio for part three, but uh, I just wanted to uh, check in. I've been gone. Uh, I've been extremely busy with work, and I took a vacation. Yes, I took a vacation, and it was it was amazing. It was the the biggest vacation I've ever taken in my life. Went to the UK. England, Scotland, and Ireland, and, and it was great. Um, I'm back now, and, you know, it, it got me thinking. I've been thinking uh, a lot about, you know, taking a vacation. Now, that's just something I never really did or have done in my life. Um, you know, I was a kid, went to Disneyland. But as an adult, I really didn't take many vacations, especially uh, during my junkie years. Um, junkies just don't take vacations. It's kind of hard. Um, outside of the couple two-day trips here and there, L.A., San Francisco, uh, Baltimore, Pennsylvania, uh, and Vegas quite often because it was close, um, never more than two or three days because... Well, guess what? You're a junkie, and for one, it's kind of hard to uh, afford to pay for any kind of vacation when you're a junkie and you have to pay for dope. But uh, even when I did have money and was a junkie, uh, it's hard to take vacations because you need to stay somewhere close to your dealer. You have to have access to your shit. And if you don't, you withdraw. And if you withdraw, you feel miserable. And if you feel miserable, you don't enjoy vacation. So why the fuck would you want to take a vacation as a junkie? Right? Like, it makes sense. The logic is there. So I, ne I never took many vacations as a junkie. And so it was kind of mind-blowing for me to uh, take this two-week-long vacation. And toward the end of the vacation in Ireland... Um, was sitting in my hotel and I was thinking about you know my life and and where I was I'm, I'm in Ireland like holy shit like never in a million years did, did I ever think I would take a vacation like this uh, let alone be able to afford it and uh, I kind of got this warm fuzzy feeling in my chest I guess you call it uh, gratitude, uh, thankfulness, uh, feeling blessed, and it, it made me happy. You know, I thought about the past and the present and all the time in between, and a vacation, which is something I never really thought about and never did. Um, junkies don't take vacations, and I never did. And, um, that's just how it was. I mean, of all the, the junkies I hung out with, I don't ever remember any of them taking vacations, you know, one or two days here and there, like I did, and it's hard to travel when you're a junkie. Uh, the, the few handfuls of times that I did travel, most of the time it was by car. Uh, the few times that it was by plane, it was extremely nerve-wracking, and I was always paranoid of getting caught, of trying to smuggle oxys or uh, balloons full of heroin through the airport. And, but I did because I didn't really have the choice. And it was always super nerve wracking. You know, walking through airport security with a mouthful of balloons that are full of heroin, you know, you get caught and you're in so much trouble. And, but you still did it. You know, you didn't really have a choice. 
and so I didn't travel much. And none of the none of the junkies I knew ever ever traveled. And um, I remember um, you know, toward the beginning of my addiction years, um, before shit was just super out of control, just kind of right at the beginning of the downward spiral. Um, well, I guess I was firmly in the spiral at that time. I mean, I was living on the fucking street with my girlfriend, and we're living in my truck. The heater was busted. We we're freezing our asses off every single night. Uh, Utah winters are cold as shit. And it was late November, early December. I, I don't have my journals in front of me, but, you know, snow was on their ground. It was cold. Ski season is a really big deal here in Utah. People come from all over the place, all over the world, to ski on the slopes here. Um, not a big skier myself. I hate being cold and I hate being wet. But people come from all around. And, you know, I was living on the streets all the time, living out in a vehicle. With my girlfriend, we had to steal every day just to afford drugs, just to make it through the day so we weren't feeling miserable and sick. But uh, one night, it was late evening, it was dark, it was cold. We were tired of freezing our asses off, and we just wanted to sleep in a warm bed. That was the only thing we wanted to do, and maybe have a hot shower. So we didn't care where we could stay. We just wanted to stay somewhere. A hotel and uh, at that time uh, late 2003 a lot of places were no longer taking checks and you know I still had a checking account I still had a checkbook I was writing bad checks to eat and just pay for shit so I didn't have money and the money I did have went to drugs so I was passing bad checks and we went to every motel hotel Roach and Bested shithole we could find in the Salt Lake Valley to sleep in a bed, a warm room, and uh, we finally found a hotel. It was actually a pretty nice hotel just south of Salt Lake City, and uh, had a big fireplace. It was nice and warm. You know, for me, it was like the greatest hotel in the world compared to living out of my truck. And I remember walking in there, and they accepted checks. Super relieved. Just wrote this check for hundreds of dollars to stay there for a few nights. And I remember looking at some of the guests coming and going and that were in the hotel, and a lot of them were families, and they had just gotten back from spending all day on the slopes skiing and having a good time, you know, on vacation, sitting by the fireplace, drinking hot cocoa and marshmallows, just laughing and enjoying each other's company. And I remember looking at these people and thinking to myself, that's never going to be me. Yeah. I will never be those people. I will never be the happy family, uh, the happy guy sipping hot cocoa next to the fire with my expensive ski jacket and ski boots and skis slung over my shoulder as fancy tourists here in Utah always are during the ski season. I will never be that person. And, you know, it made me sad, but it, I wasn't butthurt over it. I wasn't upset. I, I, it made me sad because it was a fact. I knew it was a fact. It was plain as day. My life was pretty much over in my mind. Like, I was in self-destruct mode, and that is what I was doing. I was blazing a path of self-destruction, and I was either going to end up dead or in jail. Like, those were my only two options, and I, I had come to accept that, but it didn't stop me from feeling sad and depressed and being jealous. I was outright jealous of these people. I was jealous of what they had. I wanted that. I mean, nobody wants to be a junkie living on the streets. Fuck. Like, nobody grows up saying, hey, I want to be a fucking junkie living on the streets. No. People want to go on vacations. They want people to love them. They want people around them that love them and go on fancy vacations and, and spend money and 
whiskey and shit like that. Like, that's what people want out of life, right? And and I knew that wouldn't be me. And it was sad. And this is how it was. That was life. That was my reality. And we went up to our room and we enjoyed a couple nights of warmth before we were back out in the cold and the crazy shit happening but but i look back now and you know what i i am those people i i was those people i got to be those people i was just on vacation in the uk and it felt great i had a, a great time and i was happy i am happy there's no denying that I am in a good place now. And anybody, anybody dealing with any shit in their life, whether it be poor choices, circumstance, uh, anything really, hopefully, hopefully they can find a little solace and have some hope that things can get better. They always can get better than they did for me and and I'm extremely happy and grateful that they did and with that um, I, I think I'm gonna in this entry don't give up hope